Welcome Wildlings, Colin Stuckert here, founder, CEO of Wild Foods Co. And today I wanna to do a brief video intro to one of our articles and just the topic in general, and that is dietary fat. So in our country, if you haven't been paying attention, dietary fat went through this long period of time where everyone thought it was the worst thing ever, we shouldn't eat it. And only recently, and we still have a long way to go with this, but only recently have scientists and researchers really started to question whether a lot of that dogma around some of that old research is accurate or not. And what what anyone who's done any work in, in the field, and if you like read something like Good Cowers, Bad Cowers by Gary Taubes, you bas we basically debunked the idea that dietary fat and or saturated fat contributes to heart disease and should be avoided because it's not good for you. In fact, the whole new thing is something, and, and we're getting closer to the truth, is sugar is a primary killer and the primary contributor because it contributes to inflammation and it, it feeds cancer and things like that. And that plus hormones being out of whack from eating processed refined foods without fiber, without anything that kind of slow digestion, these are the real things that are contributing to our obesity epidemic. So this video, or excuse me, this uh, article kind of goes through what that whole process has been, like kind of, uh, we have, you know, how most people thought it was bad, how you die or whatever, the typical journey with fat, how most people are like try to go for low fat options and then they kind of wake up and then they start eating a higher fat diet and it's very much a mindset shift that, I, that and one I recommend everybody should do. But it kind of talks about that a little bit in here. And, and then a very important point about this whole topic, which makes it kind of funny, is the fact that fat is absolutely essential to life, to you as a human being. If you don't eat fat, if you don't eat dietary fat, from your diet, you will die. Yet, the same cannot be said of carbohydrates. The same can be said of protein. So basically, the human animal must eat protein and it must eat fat or it will cease to exist. But it could go without carbohydrates for the rest of its life because your body has certain mechanism, me mechanisms in place to produce carbohydrates, which is why humans don't actually need carbohydrates. Now, I'm not debating or, or getting into the whole like, should you eat carbs or not? I think generally most people should have some carbs. I don't think we need as many carbs as we do. And for sure, when it comes to sugar, we should be eating as little, if any, as possible. Now, I don't wanna to veer too far off topic with that. We'll kind of stick with fat with this, but you can watch some of my other videos on that. The Wild CEO on YouTube, I kind of address sugar and fat gain and the different you know calories in, calories out, and kind of debunking that. But generally, for most people, fat is something that you want to be eating more of, especially quality sources. You know, we have some right here that's like an avocado, olive, you know, some nuts and seeds, and then obviously fatty fish is like one of the best things you can eat, uh, which is why I take fat, wild fish oil every single day. And, you know, a big point to remember here is the fact that some fat is bad for you. Soybean oil, canola oil, processed and refined seed and vegetable oils, and things like Crisco and other hi hi partially hydrogenated fats are extremely bad for you. And those are things you shouldn't eat at all. Then when you have good fats, certain fats have smoke points. And so you have to make sure you don't heat them beyond a certain point, or you could turn them rancid, which causes free radical damage in your body because of the breakdown of the fats and, and the separation of the carbon atoms and kind of a lot of sciencey stuff. But basically when you are cooking an oil in a pan and it starts smoking aggressively, you're probably breaking it down. So you want to always avoid smoking an oil that way. And you also want to avoid in general for just general health, you want to avoid uh, cooking foods at too high temperature because that's where you get into a lot of the issues with food and quality and degrading quality and, and pr producing the carcinogenic compounds that you get from cooking at high temperatures, especially when you blacken things or char things, okay? So this guide will kind of go through the types of fat, which ones uh, you should aim for, which ones you should reduce. In general, the summary of that is omega-6, you wanna try to limit omega-3, you wanna eat more of, especially omega-3 that has uh, EPA, DPA, and DHA, which you find in animals, uh, fatty fish, wild game, etc. Whereas omega-6 you find in a lot of seed oils and you find it in like grain-fed beef and you find it in chicken and other industrialized farm animals, you see a lot of omega-6. And since our diet has so much omega-6 from, from the seed oils, the vegetable oils, and the factory farmed animals, most of us have to focus on eating more omega-3 while reducing our omega-6. And then we get in a little bit into here into monosaturated fatty acids and then saturated fat and the differences. Uh, we have ALA, which is found in plants, but it poorly converts to EPA and DHA the way you would eat from fatty fish. Like fatty fish has it in it, whereas ALA has to be converted into it. And so it's not a good replacement for eating healthy wild-caught animals and or fish 
because the ALA doesn't convert to EPA DHA as much, and EPA DHA is just a must for the human being. Uh, it, it, it's, it plays a role in a million processes in the body, and there's a million, there's just tons of research around the benefit of it, and us needing to get more of it, and what that can do for the body, etc. So some fat, fat principles we talk about, like vegetable and seed oils, breaking them down, you know, what to avoid. And then we get into a little bit of factory farming. And like when you're buying an, any, any animal product whatsoever, you should be looking for keywords like grass-fed, free-range, organic, wild-caught, cage-free, humanely treated, friends of the sea, etc. And then we have this nifty little, uh, I guess, table here that kind of shows you some of the omega-6, the omega-3 ratio. And even even this in grass-fed beef, you see it's got about, about a three to one or four to one ratio from omega-6 to omega-3. Grain-fed beef, on the other hand, has like 30 times more omega-6 than omega-3. And you're not trying to necessarily avoid omega-6. What you're trying to do is you're trying to make the omega-6 to the omega-3 as close to a one-to-one -one relationship as possible because that's what is most commonly found in the wild and that's most natural to our species. And so you'll see a lot of these things there is a more omega-6 than omega-3. And so you're just trying to, again, reduce omega-6 as much as possible while getting as much omega-3 as possible. But this is a pretty nifty thing for certain meats if you weren't sure of. Uh, Grass-fed, not lean, yep, yep, yep. Duck breast, the duck has quite a bit of omega-6 and less omega-3. Turkey is pretty heavy in omega-6 too, although it is a lean meat, so not as much built in. And then chicken has a lot of duck and chicken typically have a lot of omega-6 to omega-3. So that's why typically you want to try to avoid the skin if you can. You know, if you're going to eat the skin, it's going to be a treat. That's the way you think of it. Uh, and then same thing with a lot of nuts and seeds. A lot of them are omega-6 heavy. And so you can read through that. Uh, seafood is usually going to have more omega-3 than omega-6. And this is kind of a telling thing that is explained by our evolutionary past. A lot of anthropologists, biologists, paleontologists, you know, whoever, scientists believe that humans really grew big brains and evolved from our most direct ancestors when we started getting access to either very protein but also fatty rich foods by either learning to hunt better or by learning to fish more successfully. And if you look at uh, some of the seafood levels of omega-3, you could see how this could make sense considering almost all of the fish and seafood has more omega-3 than omega-6 by a long shot. And so there is a lot of water on the planet and you know we would have utilized as much of that as possible. We would have had near limitless supply of seafood if we were able to figure out how to, how to fish it successfully. And so it's kind of interesting how that can play into how we evolved, how we're built, and how that directs how we should be eating on a daily basis. And then we get into heating fats and oils, some cooking temperatures, etc. Uh, high fat misconceptions and then a conclusion and then that's me and so i really hope you read through this and kind of educate yourself on fat uh, start avoiding the bad fats and eating more of the good fats aim for more omega-3s so less omega-6 and obviously the baseline for any food or nutrition recommendation is to eat a diet that's based on eating real foods as close to nature as possible you can find this at wildfoods.co if you go to guides and then you go to fat guide right here all right. My name is Colin Stuckert and I approve this message. Thank you for watching.